have a question for you. Have you ever had this happen before in Datagraph where you have made a graph like the one you see to the side of me and you've changed the size of the graph but the text label that you've added doesn't stay put where you wanted it to be? Well, this is kind of interesting because we've been doing this series of new features in Datagraph version 5.2 and to be honest, I thought I would end that with the last video that I did but I just had someone contact me uh, longtime Datagraph user, good friend, who said, you know, I'm having this issue with my with my text moving around. Uh, I love the videos you've been doing. It'd be great if somehow we could we could work on this. Well, there is a reason why Datagraph works the way it does with text labels. But if this is a problem that you've had and you want to have text labels that stay put and are pinned to the the particular X Y location uh, where you have them in a graph then that's something we're going to talk about today. I'm also going to talk about another incremental improvement into the custom legend command. Uh, so labels and legends. This is our topic for today. If you are new to Datagraph or you are just coming across this video, then please go ahead and consider downloading a trial. There's a link in the description to this video. Then you can follow along with everything that we do today. Uh, let's get started. The first thing that I want to do is give you a bit of an overview of some techniques for adding labels in Datagraph that have been in there for a while. This is not just new in 5.2, but these are some techniques which will pin a uh, label to a specific location. The first one is using the label command. So here I have a very simple file. I have a single column of data over here, and I'm using a plot command to you create a line plot with this where the X is my row number and the Y is this data column. If I add a label command into this, then notice that what you get is a text label that's connected to an arrow uh, that I can move around and it will snap to different X and Y locations that are in my line plot. I will do this for both points commands and the line plot, again, snapping to specific locations, but you could use it to point anywhere in your graph. If you want to change the text that's here, I can do it in the command itself, or you can just double click on the text itself and just you know type in something here. Um, this has a lot of options. You can change whether this is an arrow, a big arrow. You can do other types of connectors. That's all within the detail of this label command. Uh, and this is very handy, again, for doing a single label. And if I change my aspect ratio of my graph, what you'll notice is that the arrow stays pointed at the same location, but the distance that the label itself is from the arrow stays the same. And that's because this label command, like many labeling options in Datagraph, there's really two components to where the label is located. The first component is uh, where, in this case, where is it, where's the arrow? Where is it pinned to, or what we also refer to as the anchor point in some of the other commands? In this case, the anchor point here is what you see right here. This is uh, x is 6, y is equal to 5. But there's also an offset, and the offset location is over here. Uh, by default, the offset is a pixel location. It is also in X and Y coordinates. But notice if I move this really close to where the point is, the offset numbers get smaller and smaller. If I move this further away, then I'm further away from my anchor point. My offset is much larger, and those values reflect that. Again, these are in pixels. Uh, you can also type in units of measure here. So if I wanted my label to be uh, you know, off by one centimeter, I could type in one cm. OK, so that's the label command. Now, the other thing to be aware of, because again, this is just labeling one point, if I wanted to have a label for every one of the points here, then the command itself has an option of adding a label. And most commands within Datagraph have this. So if you expand the commands, uh, you will typically find some section within the body of the command that talks about labels and gives you various options. 
For example, here's my plot command. You can see by default labels says no labels. But if I wanted to, for example, have my Y value be labeled, I can select that column. And now I have labels for every single one of my points. Similar to the label command, these labels are pinned to a location and they have an offset. It may not be as obvious here, uh, but the anchor point for each one would be whatever XY coordinate it corresponds to. And the offset is actually right here. You see there's a, an option that says label offset. It's currently set to the point variable. That means if I change the point variable here, then my labels are going to move further away from the point. Um, but I can, again, I could type in a specific number um, or a specific distance that I want these labels to be uh, away from the anchor location. I've shown you now how you can label in two different ways using the labels command to add a, a single label like you see here, or how we can use the commands themselves to add labels like the labels that are around each one of these points. Now what I want to do is talk about the command that is the one which we updated in 5.2, which is in fact the text command. So first let's go ahead and make another plot of this same data and Again, might as well uh, make this a nice color. And in this plot at points, uh, what I want to do is again, I want to add a text label at a certain location and I want it to stay there. And I'm not gonna use a label command because I want to maybe do a slightly more complicated uh, type of text labeling. So go under the label uh, icon that's in the toolbar and I want you to add this command right here, the text command, a text label typically anchored relative to the boundary. Okay, so when I add this, uh, you see how their text label is right here. This is again something I can click and drag around. And what may not be obvious to you when you do this is that the text command also has an anchor and an offset. Just like the label command did, you just don't see it. However, it will tell you where the anchor is. Right here in the command itself, first of all, there's an option that says where. This is by default inside, meaning that the text label is somewhere inside the XY coordinate system of the graph. Uh, and the anchor point is set here to the upper left corner. And to the right of that is where we have the offset. So notice what happens as I click and drag this text command around, the offset will change. So if I decide I really want my text command, say in the center of this graph, and then I drag the graph and changing, I'm changing here the aspect ratio or the size of the graph, well, it's not staying in the center. And that's because it is actually anchored up here to this left corner and it has the offset that I specified. It's offset based on the value that's specified here. So the, you know, one solution is that uh, you can, let's set this back to zero, zero, just so you can see where it's actually anchored to. I could say that I actually want this uh, in the upper center, and now it will be close to the center. And if I also said my offset is zero, zero, oops, zero comma zero, and I can align the text itself to be centered with that location. Now it will stay in the center. So there are ways to use the anchoring and the offsets to place text in exact locations around the graph itself. Uh, but this still doesn't solve the problem of what if you really wanna just put some text within or next to a point. So that's what I'm gonna show you next. The new option that we added into the text command in DataGraph 5.2 uh, can be accessed by using the Where menu. And if you click this menu, you'll see there are actually a lot of different ways that we can use the text command to do custom labeling on the axes, to labeling throughout the figure itself, not just within the XY coordinate system. Uh, but this new option is simply called Coordinate. I'm going to go ahead and select that. 
And when I do, by default, it's placing this at zero, zero. And these are x, y coordinates. This is no longer a pixel offset. Uh, so if I drag this text around, notice that in fact it is changing these locations and it's changing them with x and y. So my point here is at x equal to y equal to 3 and you can see that my coordinate with the text that's nearby is very close. So maybe I want this to be exactly at x is equal to 2 and maybe y is 3.5. The other thing that the text command uh, does different than the label command where the label is is really for shorter labels the text command here allows you to also add additional lines so you can click over here to add more lines uh, and I can you know then make a longer you know here let's see here is more text uh, and I have these currently both centered uh, if I again want to make sure this is exactly centered at x equal to 2 I can type that in and now, as I move my uh, command around and change the size of this, the text is staying roughly in that same location. Now notice, because I have multiple lines here, if I make this really small, it is overlapping that point, uh, but it is definitely staying relative to my points in a way that makes a lot more sense. And again, I can always click and drag it around, or I can type in the exact location of where I want it to be pinned. Why wouldn't we always want our text commands tied to an XY location? Well, I wanted to show you an example where we definitely would not want that. Here I've added an additional text command into this graph that shows you up in the top corner. This is such a common thing to do for scientific graphing and graphing in general, to have some kind of a label in the corner. And I have another set of data that has the same label. And if you look at this, these are text commands that both have the same anchor in the offset. So they are pinned in the exact same location and it looks very neat when we move between the two. Now, of course, if we're going into a publication, we probably don't want the size to be automatic. I would recommend going in and setting a specific size that's going to kind of change things here because the font that I've been using is much bigger than I would want in a publication. So I could change this to 10 point font, for example. And if I now take my style settings and my canvas settings and highlight these, I can copy them, go into my other graph here, and now I can paste them, which will overwrite the format for this graph. And now my text label in the top left hand corner is in the exact same location as the other graph I have. So the ability to pin and offset exactly really helps a lot with this type of labeling where you are creating labels that you want to be consistent between multiple graphs. So now you have that option of using the text command for that type of label as well as using a text command for the labeling like you see here where it's going to be pinned to a location independent of how you change the sizing. If you're creating these graphs for publication, a couple of other things I would pay attention to. I'd probably reduce the point size quite a bit from what you had before. Also my line thickness, line thickness of one is just fine. Uh, I also increase the zoom here so that you can see this a little bit better as you're watching this video. Uh, so now the last thing that we're going to do here is I want to show you some of the uh, additions and changes in the custom legend command. To make sense out of this, I think it's worthwhile to see how the default legend works. So you can go ahead and add that to a graph and it automatically picks up the name of the data as well as the symbols that are used uh, and some representation of what the data looks like in my graph. Here I have both the point and the line. The name of the data is coming from the command. So if you expand, for example, this plot command, you'll see there is an option for legend name. Uh, there's a token there now pulling the name of the column, but you can delete that and type whatever you want if you wanted to change that name. This also has an anchor and an offset. I would probably want this in the lower right so it's not covering my data. And I can also change the width of this either using the slider or interactively. Now, when I create a legend, again, it's picking up the information to populate the legend based on what's drawn in the graph. So I could take this legend and I could actually click that, drag it and drop it on my other graph. 
And then if I go here, notice it picked up the information from this graph and is appropriately showing the a different name here and a different color that's associated with, with the second graphic. Okay, that's how the default legend works. So now the custom legend is something that is available under the draw menu, oh sorry, under the label menu, and you'll see it here, a custom legend, a more flexible legend, but not as automatic. So let's go ahead and add one of these. And when you do, you'll see that there is a box that shows up. It's very narrow because there's currently nothing in it. It does not automatically look at what's in the graph and populates it. This is where you have control over everything that you're going to see in that custom legend. So let's go ahead and hide the default legend and just work with this custom legend a little bit. I'm gonna expand this out. If you had prior or had used the custom legend in other versions of data graph, you would notice that there were boxes here that you could click in order to select different items to add. We've changed that to a drop down menu. So for example, in this case, say I wanted to add a particular color to my legend. That's going to add an entry and a place where I can add uh, a label. So I can type this in. Again, this is a manual process, but sometimes you want to have more control over exactly what you see within your legend. Uh, if I want to add another color, I can do that. Um, I'll just have this say the same name, but I could have this be red. Uh, and there's all sorts of other things that you can explore here, including showing uh, color scheme variables and marker scheme variables. And the other thing that I wanted to show you with this is how we now also have border options here. So the custom legend in prior versions of data graph didn't show a border around the colors, which sometimes was fine. But if you had, say, a color like yellow, not having a border can really make that very difficult to view. Uh, so this is kind of a uh, simple improvement, but makes uh, the custom legend have a little bit more utility for, for building legends like this. Um, again, here I would want to anchor this in my lower right, uh, change the size here, and if you want to remove elements, you can select them and click the delete key or just select the uh, minus sign to the right of that element within the legend custom legend command. Now, just to, you know, for completeness, to compare this to the default legend, if I take this one and I drag it and drop it on my graphic here, it's now covering up the, uh, you see here was the default legend. I can change the order of these so you can see different ones or, well, I can just drag them to show them. But again, the, the custom legend, uh, in this case, it's not picking up any information from the graphic. I specified exactly what color I wanted to show, which I can change if I wanted this to be uh, solid blue, but it is, um, uh, it is what you get, you know, you, it's what you, you'll see drawn in the custom legend, whatever you specify to be there, regardless of the commands that necessarily are within the custom legend. I will say there is one option, if you'll notice on the custom legend, to say command, and if you do, you can pick the command and you can say whether you want the default marker, uh, the only the marker, you can do the line color. That will pick it up from the command itself. Um, so in any case, if you're interested in uh, going beyond what the default legend gives you, the custom legend has more flexibility to allow you to customize uh, everything that you see in the legend. Thanks for listening. This is the end of our series on Datagraph version 5.2. If you missed any of the other videos, then go on back. We have them within a playlist just specific for these types of videos. We're going to be working on other demos in the future. If you have suggestions of what you'd like to see, feel free to let us know. You can give us a comment below. And, uh, and if this was helpful, of course, we appreciate a like and definitely subscribe to our channel. Thank you.